Hi everybody, it's May 5, 2018. To those subscribers who uh, brought to my attention this article, I had read it. Yes, cell phones may be to blame for surge and deadly brain tumors. I have posted on this since uh, 2011. They're increasing every single year. We have these mainstream media articles that come out and if you did some research you will find every year mainstream media. There are numerous articles. Brain tumors increasing. Link to cell phone. Well, this man is irradiating his head with dangerous microwave frequencies. When people do not care about their own health, their own life, you will have a society filled with nihilistic, suicidal people who just don't care about anything. And because they love this technology, they'll continue to use it even at the cost of their own life. That is what we are living. So I haven't been able to really get through to anybody in terms of how dangerous this technology is. Now you pass along all the studies and well, people just want to believe what mainstream media is reporting. And they are just parroting what they hear from these motorcycles. I'm going to pause you. So you can pass along thousands of studies that prove that the effects of these uh, microwave frequencies the pulsating frequencies that are emitted from cell phones, from smart meters, from cell towers, from Gwen Towers, all of which we are saturated in now 24-7, they just don't want to take a look at them. And they want to parrot back what they hear from mainstream media, who parrot back what they hear from people in the industry, from the FCC, that, oh, there is no proof that these frequencies are dangerous. There's no proof that these frequencies are safe. But you can't get through to people anymore. Um, it's really unfortunate that we now live in societies, and it's not just the United States, but pretty much all Western societies. People don't care about anything. Now there are a few who do, but those few are subject to an environment that will only become increasingly more dangerous because of the majority. The majority actually they manifest the reality of what we live. So I'll link below to the bio initiative report and you can click on uh, research summaries and you will get a long list of PDFs and they have an awful lot of summaries of studies that have been conducted and it's been updated 2017 1990 through 2017. Let's just click on this. Let's see what this brings up. And it doesn't seem to want to come up. Oh, I do want to see it because it will show the amount of studies. Come on now. Oh, I'm wondering if it's a very, very long list, 1990 through 2017. So even just this one document may prove to be invaluable to show people, but they have to care. It's so unbelievably easy to just roll your eyes at somebody and call them a conspiracy theorist. But these people are sick who do that. They're sick. They're not well people at all.
so, oh, it doesn't account for every, it, there's no number. But from 1990 to 2017, well, you can find out the effects on melatonin. Oh, we have an exponential increase in people suffering from insomnia. Studies on infertility, studies on brain functions, studies on brain tumors, study, studies on the effects of uh, your facial nerves, soft tissue, the pulsating frequencies, the effect on uh, calcium. They affect every cell in your body. Our military has there, there are so many documents that prove the biological effects of these microwave frequencies. The reality is, is that we face a lot of people who are truly deranged and they are a danger to all of us. And they are a danger to children because they don't care. Alright, um, so yeah, we've known this. They're increasing every single year. Uh, look, I've posted videos. Silicon Valley parents are raising their kids tech-free. Oh, it should be a red flag. 2018. I posted videos back in 2014, back in 2015. Tech parents, Silicon Valley parents, they send their children to schools that are hardwired. They don't have Wi-Fi. Yeah, it should really be a red flag. When you have a majority of parents and teachers who don't care about children and they don't even care about their own health, when you don't care about your own health, your own life, you ain't going to care about anybody. So we have these children going into schools with Wi-Fi routers in their classrooms. they all staring at computers and iPads. And I know teachers who know how dangerous this is, but they don't do anything. They care about their paycheck. See, a lot of people talk about all these wonderful things that they care about, but you can see whether or not they really do care by watching how they live their life. So if you have a parent who knows about the dangers, how dangerous the school environment has become, for these kids, and they send their child off to school, something is wrong with that picture. If you have teachers who know how dangerous this technology is, and they continue to work in that environment, and they're looking at all of these kids, and they know the danger that these kids are experiencing every single day, something is wrong with that picture. When you tell people, you know, those tech parents, they actually limit or ban this technology. And they see firsthand that this technology is potentially harmful to kids. Well, it is harmful to kids. You would think that that would raise an eyebrow. What I have experienced is no one caring. So it has been a long-standing practice among high-level tech executives who have set limits for their own children. Bill Gates limits his children's use of this technology. Steve Jobs was a low-tech parent. And then you have these parents who send their kids off to schools that don't have Wi-Fi. And you would really think that parents, well, the focus, you know, it, it has what we value here. And it really started to accelerate with the baby boomers. Their parents raising that baby boomer generation to almost care about nothing except money, success, wealth. Well, each successive generation has been raised by parents who have raised kids who are so imbalanced 
in terms of their own brains. Everything is about material success. So when you have that going on, you will have people in your society who don't care about anything but money. And that is what we are living. We really do need to get honest with ourselves. And we have to face the fact that if we don't demonstrate what we care about, we don't care about it. And the only way to get to real genuine care is to admit that where you are now, you're just telling yourself you care. And at that place, at that level of consciousness, you're a danger. You are a danger to the greater society because you won't do anything to make your society a healthy one. Um, I'm not going to stop saying this, and I understand that people get upset about it, but I can't. That, that is the crux of the matter. What you care about, you demonstrate, you focus on, you bring your attention to. And if you are not doing anything about how dangerous our environment has become, you can't say that you care about what is taking place. Uh, you know, I have posted so many videos on all of my channels about the dangers to kids in particular. Okay, adults, use that cell phone. Give yourself a brain tumor. But children who don't have a choice this is, this is something so disgustingly immoral that these children are going off to schools with this Wi-Fi, having their young skulls that are softer than the adult skull, so therefore the frequencies far more easily penetrate their skulls. And this is what has manifested. Any parent, any parent, whether it's vaccines, whether it is Wi-Fi, when you bring their attention to these dangers and you tell them that, well, even go so far as I will send you links to the studies that prove that Wi-Fi is a danger to your child and they won't take a look at that? That is one very sick, deranged parent because you don't bring a child into the world and then not protect that child from any danger. But that's what we have today. There are so many children who cannot tolerate the Wi-Fi in these schools. Potentially, in 20, 30 years time, Listen we may look back and say, gee, Australia. why did we do that to our children? Without even knowing it, we're constantly being bombarded by an invisible fog of wireless radiation that could be making us sick. So, are we being fried by Wi-Fi? Single mother Trish Garcia thinks she is. She suffers from what has been called Wi-Fi sensitivity and now her 12-year-old daughter is showing the same symptoms. Headaches, even if it's just a little bit, it just kind of progresses and um, heartburn sometimes and fatigue, you know, feeling really tired and um, nausea if it gets really bad. And um, usually when I'm using things like iPads or iPods or those kinds of like touchscreen things, or even if I'm playing PlayStation for too long, 
Georgie noticed her condition grew worse at school, becoming so bad that in March this year she asked her mum if she could leave. She's now being homeschooled. I was devastated. I cried for about three days because I was just so happy with all my friends and, you know, all my teachers. We had a good relationship with all my teachers and I was doing so well and I was just so upset that I couldn't keep doing that. It was terrible. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, Georgie's exposure to Wi-Fi and the iPads at school over you know, a period of time has accumulated and has caused her to have these symptoms that are, you know, made her quite ill. The exposures in a school environment are actually much higher than in any home environment. And whether or not you're using the Wi-Fi, that router is emitting microwave radiation. And so you're constantly exposed. Dr. Magna Havas is a leading expert on electromagnetic radiation in Canada. She believes there's a great risk when it comes to Wi-Fi and children. It's an emerging health issue because we've got evidence now that it's been linked to cancers, uh, to uh, reproductive problems, to uh, uh, um, electro-hypersensitivity, to heart palpitations. So it, we're really dealing with a tsunami. Wi-Fi is now considered a necessity in... Wi-Fi is now considered a necessity in... No, it is not a necessity. It is not a necessity. People consider it as such, but it is not. Every school can be hardwired. Here, listen, I, it's stunning. This was posted 2016. Mainstream media lies all the time. They parrot back what they get from government officials or from the FCC or from the industry, telecommunications industry, that profits royally from this technology. They parrot back what they hear. And they parrot back the lies. It, it, it's, it, look, you hear so many lies people outright lying and it never stops you know that the result of that is only destruction that's it urging Nothing the FCC good comes to from adopt lying. up to date radiation standards urging current standards are 20 years old and don't account for a child's use more than a dozen scientists and pediatric neurology experts from Harvard to the California Brain Tumor Association have written letters to MCPS, joining the parent organization in urging the school system to switch to wired technology. To hear people, oncologists and epidemiologists, saying, I don't know about this stuff. And and that's good enough for me. I don't want my, my child to be the guinea pig in that experiment. That's good for me. I don't want my, we reached my out to the FCC with questions, and they too declined our request for an interview, but we they did release this statement. Quote, the U.S. has among the most conservative standards in the world. As part of our routine review of these standards, we are soliciting input from multiple stakeholder experts, including federal health agencies and others, to guide our assessment. Meanwhile, Russia, Italy, France, Switzerland, China, Belgium are among more than 20 well, other countries Russia, in the world Italy, that have enacted France, policies to reduce Wi-Fi school and exposure in schools and the to reduce Wi-Fi school and exposure in schools and get it okay why are all those countries reducing Wi-Fi in their schools why did Israel pull out Wi-Fi in all of their schools because it's a danger what you just heard was an abject lie the U.S. has among the most conservative standards? Abject lie that you get parroted back by mainstream media reporters. The FCC has not changed their standards since 1996. We don't have safety standards. We were living in a completely different world even in 1996. Now we are saturated 
cell phone towers going up all over the place, Gwen towers going up all over the place, gadgets all over the place, all of our appliances and our phones and our uh, computers and our TVs emitting dangerous frequencies today. Not so much in 1996. This is the FCC.gov, their site, August 1, 1996. Unchanged. Dangerous. No safety standards. We listened to Tom Wheeler, the former commissioner of the FCC. He said, we're rolling out 5G, and we're not going to wait for standards. We're not going to wait to regulate it. We're rolling it out. Tom Wheeler, former lobbyist of the telecommunications industry. If people don't care about their own health, then you're going to die living in that society. And you will not live your fullest potential. It is the people around you that are the enemy. And I'm not going to stop saying it. I'm sorry that that upsets people, but it Pretty is true. You want to you know how dumbed down our country has become? Now, we know that there has been a deliberate dumbing down going on with each successive generation. These standards in our public school system have lowered. Common Core is the worst of the worst. It still is the standard. These children, today, the adults, every adult in this country should be horrified by what these children are now subjected to. With the vaccines, then having to go to school in dangerous environments and then be subjected to Common Core. They don't have a choice. It's the adults that keep them protected. And what have we given them? Crap. I show you this video just to show you that we are in big trouble. <laughs> big trouble is an understatement. Can we reverse this? Yeah, I actually do believe that we could if people care. They don't care. So, this is only going to get worse. And children are going to be robbed of the kind of future that they could have had had they not been subjected to so many adults who don't give a shit about them. Um, and just, I will link below to this video, and I want to thank my subscriber for sending it along to me. It's 14 minutes, but it really very clearly shows you what has happened in our country. Now, a lot of people also leave comments saying, well, Carol, you claim that these frequencies are destroying people's brains, and then you get angry at people who aren't, able to have a conversation. This stuff started a long time ago. Prior to this new world that we are living in with this technology, Americans didn't care then. Americans have been incredibly privileged, living a very comfortable life. On the whole, there's always exceptions, but on the whole, most Americans have had a really, uh, comparatively speaking, a oh, fabulous life, and they've only cared about their life. We have spoken values that we don't live, and that has been taking place ever since the start of this country. And until you take in the whole truth, and not selective truth, you know, just obtaining knowledge about all of the events that are taking place, until you face the truth about how you lived and how you uh, have lived in a country 
along with a whole lot of other people, friends, uh, co-workers, family, all living bullshit lives, talking a good game, but not living it. Until you face that hard truth, you're not about truth. We have had a people who just don't grow up. And it doesn't matter whether it is because people have been indoctrinated. You have to work on thinking about your beliefs and thinking about that indoctrination. And you've got to weed it out. And it takes a long time. And it's very, very hard and painful work. But it's necessary. And when people don't do that, they stay on that low level of consciousness telling themselves fabulous things about themselves that are not true. I saw this in my early 20s. The self-centeredness. I saw it in my own life, having done the work. This caring about nothing but one's own life has gotten us. Forget the 10% drop in SAT and achievement test scores. The press beats to death with regularity. How do you explain the 37% decline since 1972 in students who score above 600 on the SAT? This is an absolute decline, not a relative one. It's not affected by this an increase in unsuitable minds taking the test or an increase in the numbers. The absolute body count of smart students is down drastically, with a test not more difficult than yesterday's, but considerably less so. What should be made of a 50% decline among the most rarefied group of test takers? Those who score above 750. In 1972, there were 2,817 American students who reached this pinnacle. Only 1,438 did in 1994, when kids took a much easier test. Can a 50% decline occur in 22 years? without signaling that some massive leveling in the public school mind is underway? In a real sense, where your own child is concerned, you might best forget scores on these tests entirely as a reliable measure of what they purport to assess. I wouldn't deny that mass movements in these scores in one direction or another indicate something is going on. And since the correlation between success in schooling and success on these tests is close, then significant scores are certainly measuring changes in understanding. So how does Obama get the money then to do those kinds of things for those policies that you disagree with? Where does that money come from? Well, it comes from you and I, everybody else. If, if you didn't like his policies, you wouldn't vote for him. If there wasn't certain things that you know, led you to go out and vote for him, then you wouldn't have done it. So what do you think it says when the government is able to spend your tax dollars on things that you disagree with? Um, I don't really shun it. I mean, you know, you gotta kind of spread out everybody's money to everything, whether or not you support it or not. How how does the government actually achieve that of, of the, the spreading of the money? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I mean, you'd want to know if this is like an important thing, and you're willing to support someone in the White House who's you know carrying out all these policies and is responsible for all this destructive foreign policy. Like, well, I mean, wouldn't you want to know where that money comes from? Like, how how the government gets money in the first place? Because you know, what, what, cause you, you know, it comes from somewhere, right? He's gonna get all the money from all of us. But as far as the distribution goes, sometimes there's a simple ignorant bliss about it that all of the American people look to. Would you say that you're in that ignorant bliss? I would say a lot of people are. Are you? Am I? I think I am. I think there's a good chunk of us all right here that are standing out here. And you think it's true that ignorance is bliss? Sometimes, yeah. It's better off not to know. It's kind of a scary proposition. I mean, you, you know, the government is like, it's, it's really dangerous. Like, it ends up actually like, hurting lots of people. You bury your head in the sand and say, I'm just going to be an Obama supporter. Between 1960 and 1998, the non-teaching bureaucracy of public schools grew 500%. But oversight was concentrated into fewer and fewer hands. Let him ask his question. 
So this, this is a dovetail. So don't stand for this. Find, you're sitting here like cattle. You have questions here. Find that. They don't want to do it in public. Okay. Can you, can you, The next question to our panel is that the Lowry. I'm Aaron. I'm Aaron. I'm Aaron. The 40,520 school districts with elected boards this nation had in 1960 shriveled to 15,000 by 1998. On the college rung of the school ladder, between 1960 and 1984, the quality of undergraduate education at America's 50 best-known colleges and universities altered substantially. According to a 1996 report by the National Association of Scholars, these schools stopped providing broad and rigorous exposure to major areas of knowledge for the average student, even at decidedly unaverage universities like Yale. Stanford. In 1964, more than half of these institutions required a thesis or comprehensive for the bachelor's degree. By 1993, 12% did. Over the same period, the average number of classroom days fell 16%, and the requirements in math, natural science, philosophy, literature, composition, and history almost vanished. Rhetoric, the most potent of the active literacy, completely vanished. And foreign language, once required at 96% of the great colleges, fell to 64%. We're in big trouble. So many want to claim that it is the frequencies and the poisons that Americans have been subjected to. This was happening decades ago. Christians want to claim that it's because the American people uh, let God go. Uh, God has been removed from the country. And they believe that if people would just believe in Jesus and turn their life over, then we would still be a moral country. I say to you that because we have had Christians as the largest majority in this country from the start, 90% up until just recently it became 74%, then something is wrong with Christians in this country. Not everyone, but the majority. The majority sets the tone. So where is God and Jesus in the Christians that have always been <laughs> when you talk about a 90% majority, then something is wrong. They are living a pretense. They're lying to themselves. And that has been going on with Americans from the start. Yes, I absolutely do agree with those who claim that this is a spiritual problem. We have a moral problem. We have a big problem with an awful lot of people who refuse to take a look at their own self. And it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have about what is taking place with the destruction of this country, if you do nothing with that knowledge, you are just like the sleeping sheeple. You know, adults, you can destroy your life. But the destruction of the lives of these kids is hard to take. And we will get nowhere. Nowhere. 
with the condition of the human race, but the condition of the American people. Yeah, I focus on Americans because I am an American and I live in this country. So, the condition of the American people. Immoral, self-centered, lazy, narcissistic, at the same time, living with this delusional brain that tells them that they're good people. Well, guess what? We don't have a lot of good people. And this idea about good or bad, it's like... I, I don't even put people into that category. Every individual has good and bad in them. But it is up to us if we're a moral human being who feels a connection between their life and the greater society. It is our obligation to continually work on the bad stuff so that we can better manifest a healthy society. This society has become so sick and deranged, not just because of those elite rulers who have, what, led the entire population around because you know, they have collars and leashes on. Take the collar off and start growing. Start doing something.